in natural deduction. Some of you have to go through that and get some sequence. If you go in a couple of minutes, I'll work on them on the board as well. We'll see what happens. If you're not sure how to do a natural deduction, do a natural deduction. If you're confident in how to do this in natural deduction, then do it in um, Jensen sequence. So that means we're going to assume P and Q and try to prove the Paulson. Now, we've got this disjunction, so we're going to prove from not P, we're going to prove a Paulson. And from not Q, we're trying to prove a Paulson. If both of those work, we get this Paulson. We've got rid of our disjunction. Six, seven, eight. From five to six, from seven to eight, we've done our disjunction elimination. That's an assumption. We're going to get a P from here, we're going to get a Q from here, nine and ten. Just to fill in the details. And that's from five and nine, and that's from seven and ten. That's our proof. Oh, this thing here, I guess, came from three to four. Okay. So we can prove that, and we use some form of negation um, introduction. And the other major move we did was we did this elimination of the of the disjunction at the top. So let's have a go. Move this over a bit. Let's have a go at doing that in um, Gibson sequence. Who's actually? We've been doing the Henson sequence while I was talking. Cool. Who finished it? Yeah. It's finished? Cool. Can I have a quick look then? No. Cool. Can I borrow that? Right. I, mean, I could probably do this, but hey. It's, um, oops. Okay, cool things in there, but some rules we can't use until next week. So I'm going to give that back to you. Sorry, looked at it, looked reasonable. I thought, damn, we can't use it until next week. Sorry, but I have to do it manually. Are you moving the disjuncts over? You can't move the disjunct over yet. Sorry, we will have to do that in a week or two. Okay, so we have to do it ourselves, being careful not to use the rules you want to use, but just only the rules that we've got here. I thought that logically follows, not that logically follows what we've learned so far. Okay. So here's a, here's a negation. We'll use this negation straight away. And that says, if we've got our not P or not Q as a premise, and we've got P and Q as a premise, we've moved this over here, got rid of the negation. Negation on the right. Then we're trying to prove nothing, which, if you like, is the same as trying to prove also. So that was our steps one, two, four. So one, three, two, and four. I'll just write down false as a way of writing down nothing. Okay. So now what's our next move? Well, up. Um, we could have broken this thing down first, or we could break this thing down. I want to break this thing down here first. It's probably slightly tidier rather than breaking down inside here. So not P or not Q, comma P, comma Q. I got rid of the disjunction on the uh, conjunction on the left. And now I'm going to split out this disjunction on the left using this formula here. This disjunct becomes a premise in one argument. This disjunct becomes a premise in another argument. So we're going to split that out. We're going to have two arguments, one over here and over here for inferences. One with a not P, one with a not Q. And we need to rearrange everything else to fit. Now we've got no conclusion. We've got no conclusion at the beginning but in, in, in both of those. We've got no conclusion to choose from. And we've got these two other premises, a P and a Q, to choose where they go. So I'm going to put the, not, the P of the premise here and the Q of the premise here. 
And what we've done is just got rid of this, this joint on the left, which is just this wall here that we used at least once or twice last week. And now that's looking a lot like this. We've got a P not P therefore nothing, or contradiction, and a Q not Q therefore nothing, or contradiction, which is this little bit here. Now we need to use those to take us home, to tidy it up. So this isn't this shape here, which is how we finish all of our proofs at the top. How can we do that? Well, we've got a negation on the left. Time for a negation on the left rule. Negation on the left rule is just like negation on the right. You move it over and you lose the negation. So this says from P and not P, you get a contradiction. But if you move the not P over, we're going to get P, therefore P, <coughs> so this will just say nothing. So this is effectively empty. So it's P or empty, we don't need to write down the empty because you've now got something in that list of things you're trying to prove. You're trying to prove P. And over here, you move the Q over to the not Q, and that not Q becomes a Q because you're getting rid of the negation on the left both times. And of course, these are our finished rules. So we use negation on the right, negation on the left.